So hello everybody. Once again, we meet after class 12. I see some uh, familiar faces. Um, we are going to be discussing the syllabus and the question paper pattern uh, based on the new upload by the CBSE. This is for class 10, English language and literature. We'll be handling communicative in a different session. And we are going to have a discussion, meaning that please uh, raise your hand if you feel that there is a point that you'd like to clarify or share, okay? It'll be a good idea. So, uh, and before we proceed, I believe today is a day for, for um, it, it's called the World English Day, the World Book Day. So great. I mean, I think it's a big day for us as subject specialists. Also, I am very excited for today, 7 p.m. We are announcing our result for the poetry composition uh, that we had uh, rolled out for teachers of English. So I'm very excited about that. Right on. Let's proceed. So when we talk about language and literature, the CBSE says the following. The CBSE sent out a circular and it had these aspects. I would like everybody to focus on point three. Just look at point three. So what does it say? That before you proceed with the curriculum for this new session, please ensure that the initial pages of the document are looked at. I've put this circular here, part of the circular here as proof that I'm not saying it. I am stressing what is given in the syllabus, in the, in the circular here. And it clearly says that please focus on the initial pages of the document. Now, what else does this circular say for all of you? It says, that the subject should be taught as per the curriculum released by the board with the help of suitable teaching learning strategies. Now, all through the year, through the COE sessions, they've been training teachers for art integrated education, experiential learning, pedagogical plans, happy, joyful classrooms, teacher as facilitator, story integration, sports integration, so many things, uh, competency-based pedagogies and such, okay? And they've also added wherever possible, do not force art where it is not possible. Don't force it, okay? It should lend itself to it naturally. We are lucky that our subject offers us many opportunities. We'll be doing a separate session in June sometime exclusively for art and we'll pick up chapters separately to help you understand the difference between uh, how you could sort of put across AIL and how you could go ahead with art integrated activities and we'll upload some worksheets for you as well. Okay. The next thing that the circular says is before making annual pedagogical plan or plans, focus on, okay, the important topics covered in initial pages of the curriculum document. And yet we skip all of that. Okay. So initial pages are extremely important. And therefore today we will begin with what the initial pages for class 9 and 10. You know, they're very different from 11 and 12. So what, what do the initial pages basically say? Okay. So the first thing, as you can see, the syllabus document started here. So the first thing that the document talks about in the initial part is the background. So what are they saying in the background? They are saying very clearly that the textual materials and other resources should represent a wide range of learning experience. Now, textual materials is not in our hands. That's been given to us by the NCRT, right? So other resources is where we are going to be playing. So other resources would mean the materials that we present to the kids in the classroom. For example, I recall, I keep uh, jokingly uh, asking one of the teachers here that you've taken one material, one resource from here on writing. Have you been able to execute that? And she always laughs Finished. and says... 
finished oh, oh, yeah. oh wonderful and wonderful. i really like the way they did that letter question number 3 good i'm so glad okay so now that is something that should you know uh, represent a learning experience you are not making them practice letters you are making them learn writing skills okay so the learning experience has to happen there so the next thing is that you should encourage kids to read authentic literature it's not just the textbooks okay so if there are connected themes on which you can provide some authentic literature even if it is a label on a particular bottle even if it is the rules of a game even if it is uh, an advertisement about a sports shoe if it is thematically connected please make them read because it's authentic literature we will do uh, over the next few months we will do one session on using authentic materials not just for reading but for other skills as well we'll do one session on that okay now another thing that the initial pages say is culturally appropriate pieces of literature play a pivotal role at the secondary stage of education which is why in your book sometimes we feel oh why do we have this chapter we have it because it speaks of a particular culture or a social milieu or strata of our country so it's very important to tell the children that it is not just about enjoyable stories in your textbooks okay yeah and like i said the english class should not be seen as a place merely to read poems and stories here it is i'm not saying it it's given here in the initial pages that kindly stop making your classroom all about your textbooks that is not only what it is equip the learner with communicative skills meaning what listening speaking writing are equally important and when i take you through today's session today you will discover that okay yeah now as we progress in the initial pages there is something called at number 2 general objectives the first thing that they've done is they have included independent reflection and inquiry is required in the child independent reflection and inquiry if the teacher is going to be lecturing all the time this gets completely cancelled out because there is no opportunity for doing it there is no opportunity for doing it okay so therefore it's important communicate in various social settings so even if you uh, uh you know create a simulation activity or a role play you have to remember that your general objectives for your curriculum document say social settings so they've met a friend they've gone for a family get together you know uh, a resident welfare association meeting where everybody is planning a diwali mela or something any social setting that you can think of okay that over a phone the conversation they've uh, gone out for a get together at a restaurant or at a picnic so those kind of social settings are required it's been it's it's written here the point is are we including these when we plan our activities equip learners with essential language skills to question and articulate their point of view pov very very important because point of view is what is tested in your literature long questions as well what do you feel why do you say so okay and it's given in the general objectives then develop curiosity and creativity through extensive reading it doesn't say extensive lecturing it says extensive reading which means your supplementary reader has to allow the child independent reading only then they will develop this kind of curiosity for inquiry okay 
then as you proceed, we continue authentic audio text. See, I have already spoke, spoke about authentic materials for reading. Now see, weather reports, public announcements, simple advertisements, this is audio, and short interviews, et cetera. Like I said, perhaps maybe towards July, we would have the audios for you, if I can get hold of someone who can do the recording. If you know someone who will help with the recording, please, please reach out. Write without prior preparation. Very important. All this is given here. Able to defend or explain the stand taken. Transcode information. Very important. We have a very big uh, writing unit from a graph, chart to description, report, write a dialogue, shock story, or just report an incident. Just because some of these things are not there in the writing section exam syllabus doesn't mean that these needn't be taught. A lot of teachers ask, man, this is not there in our syllabus, but our textbook talks about it. What should we do? You have to expose them to it because it is quite possible that in an ex extrapolatory question in literature, you would get that format for the child to write. So it says dialogue. Sometimes teachers say, uh, we haven't taught them dialogue writing. Oh, excuse me, it says so in the objectives. You're not teaching them for the purpose of assessment. You're teaching them for the purpose of exposure. Because if these things come in literature questions, it is not about the format. They basically want to see your fluency and uh, your organization. Okay, so that. The last of the general objectives, self-learning, independent learners. Please take a back seat. It's a student-centric classroom. Review, organize, edit their own work and work done by peers. So your checklists. Checklists are extremely important. Okay, even if you put up a rubric, let the peers assess. Luckily, all of you have the system where you have uh, multiple assessments and so on. You can use this. Integrate listening and speaking in the curriculum. That is what I was attempting to do. When we did it for, um, what was that chapter of class nine? That was the, the fun they had. We integrated all the skills with that one chapter, which is precisely what we were doing for a uh, letter to God and uh, last lesson for class 12. It says here, integrate. No skill exists in isolation. Okay, so next. Number three of the initial pages, language items. And they say a lot of it has already been done up to class eight, even in class nine. So in class 10, we want you to reinforce the following explicitly. Reinforce the following. What does reinforce suggest? That it is something new or has it been done before? What does it suggest? Reinforce. Really done before. Done yes, before. very good. Yes, yes. So all of these are given. Look at all of these. You may, may not find so many of them for exam purposes, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to expose them to it. It is just reinforced. So sometimes... In your textbook, if you find something in your reader that has this, like for example, I remember phrasal verbs, etc., are given there. That is the reason you're supposed to do it, so that the children know, so that when they are writing their long answers, etc., they can use this. When they are doing their writing section, they, they know what they have to do. So you're not teaching them, you're reinforcing them. Okay? And you... Uh, uh, Focus on teaching a particular topic 
when it is being assessed. Yes, but that doesn't mean you don't expose. This is proof. It's given in the syllabus. I'm not saying it. Okay, yeah. All these things that are listed here are there in your textbook, are there in the reader. You will find most of them there, okay? Number four in your initial pages is methods and techniques. Methodology, multi-skill, okay? Activity-based, learner-centered approach. Can you, learner-centered, can you, how many times have I repeated this? This is the fourth time I'm saying it. Learner-centered, learner-centered. And it very clearly suggests that, hello, teacher, you have morphed into a facilitator. So the big job that you have is planning. That's where all your work is essential. Planning. Okay. Care to be taken to fulfill the functional, literary, and cultural needs of the learner. So if you're doing speaking, listening, writing, you should know what function the child is writing for. Is the child writing to analyze? Is the child writing to describe? Is the child speaking to advise? Is the child talking to question? What are the functional things? This is again what I was attempting to address in the materials that we put up in the speaking skills. I think some of you have also mailed and uh, commended those. So that's great. Literary, you're all top shots. You know everything. Cultural is something that they expect you to expose the child through the texts, the variety of texts. And you that's your launch pad and you proceed further beyond. The teacher is the facilitator. Facilitator of learning, not facilitator of helping them crack their exams. Facilitator of learning. Learning, knowledge is constructed and you are the person who will help them place the blocks on top of each other. You are the people. Okay. Oral, oral, which is listening and speaking, teaching and testing is an integral feature of the teaching learning process. You cannot say, okay, everybody, today we will do speaking skills. What is that? It is an integral feature, integral feature. So integrated, you want to do something, uh, you have a particular topic for writing, please integrate your speaking or listening along with it as a pre-writing -pre activity, etc. which is what I've already exposed you to. When I said, when we did a session on complete your syllabus while you are teaching your lessons, this is precise. And it's there in the syllabus, isn't it? It's there. My recommendation to all you fabulous people uh, is a step ahead, please. The NEP is going to come to fruition. Three, this is the third year already. Five years is what they are saying that we will take to make it a full thing. Already the hot percentage questions are going to be far more than they were last year or are going to be in uh, 21, 22. So please stay a step ahead. Don't be caught off guard because they will always say that, listen, we've handheld you. We have explained everything to you by way of our documents. Okay, so methods and techniques for making it learner-centric, working in pairs and groups. This is very popular, whether it's our country or abroad, okay? Role play, simulating real life situations, dramatizing, miming, you do it, you do a great job of it. Problem solving and decision making. Are we giving them tasks or are we just stuck with that one problem solving speaking skill activity? Are we looking at ways through our chapters where we can do this? I'll show you some eventually as we proceed. Interpreting information given in tabular form and schedules. So you already have, you do case-based, you do analytical paragraph, you do a lot of this. 
using newspaper, et cetera, et cetera, analyzing issues, analyzing. They should habitually get into that skill of analyzing. Oh, why? Oh, what proof do I have? Oh, okay. That's, that's the first thing that should come out of their heads. Okay? Interpreting pictures, not describing pictures. This is not primary section. Interpreting pictures. Okay? Sketches, cartoons, debating and discussing, narrating and discussing stories, anecdotes. Okay. Reciting poems. Of course, they have to recite. We've done this in teaching of poetry uh, session. And here's proof. Okay. The initial pages also give a note to the teacher. Encourage interaction among peers, students and teachers through activities and so on. Interaction among peers. Just because you have put them in groups and said, okay, now discuss this. You have five minutes. Have you told them what they have to discuss? Have you given them some prompts? Are you monitoring as they discuss? Has everybody got a chance to speak? Or are you just listening to those seven, eight children who will respond? So everything has to be planned, Mr. and Miss Facilitator. Reduce teacher talk time. See, everything of the syllabus is pointing you in the direction of, please, could you cut down on your lectures? It doesn't say anywhere that stop it. It cannot stop. You have to explain things. But that happens only after you've given them the learning opportunities. Make them want to come to your class. Oh, we get to do this. It's not like, oh God, not again. That's not what they want to come to the class for. Okay. Take up questions for discussions to encourage people to participate, participate, participate. Express their views, defend their views. Where are those opportunities? We tell them, no, this is what it means. <laughs> How does that work? Follow the speaking and listening activities given in the NCRT books also. There are not many, but whichever, whatever has been given, please do them. Along with that, please create your own, pick some from here, look at other places, okay? But it has to be continuous. And the last thing in the initial pages, I think, is besides measuring learning outcome, Texts serve the dual purpose of diagnosing mistakes, areas of non-diagnosing. Yeah. To make evaluation a true index of learner's knowledge, each language skill is to be assessed through a judicious mixture of different types of questions. You will see this in the paper of 2023. Different types of questions. It says here, why? Because that's how you will get to know whether the child has actually learned, not mugged up, learned. Okay, yeah, now. Now we've begun with what is going to really interest you. Here you go. Reading skills, 40 periods. Writing and grammar, 40 periods. So 80 periods. And for books, 50 periods. 80 periods for this. Now you'd say for reading skills, 40 periods. What? I just have to give them four or five passages and get them to solve. 40 periods, do they want you to make them practice? Or do they want you to get them to become critical readers? That means for every chapter or every writing skill that you're doing or speaking skill that you're doing and whatever reading material they get, 
has to correspond with what you are preparing them for for the assessment. It is 40 periods. Now, if you're going to use all the periods for every other thing just to do your textbooks, where's the fun in that? Independent reading. They have to read the supplementary on their own. If you look at the initial pages of the supplementary reader, it will shock you. It very clearly says this is meant for the child to read. If you don't believe me, open up the pages and see for yourself. The book says it. Then why is the teacher standing in class and lecturing and giving the story outline? There are tasks and games and activities that are there to get them to read. Okay, yes. Then for listening and speaking skills, there are 30 periods. Very clearly defined. So when you create your pedagogical plans, if they are asked by the CBSC, uh, if they want to go through Ensure that you have this. I'm not saying it, it's there in the syllabus. Okay, yeah. Then you have these. You have 20 marks for reading comprehension, 20 for writing skills and grammar for the paper now. This is for the paper. 20, 20, 40. That is a total of 80. So we know it's going to be an 80 mark paper. Look at the competencies. My God. Identifying central theme, sub theme, writer's message, huh? relevant information, illustrating and justifying, applying literary conventions, reasoning. God. And then we say, oh, this is a difficult question. It's already told you what you have to do, what you have to expect in the paper. Look at this, analyzing, inferring, interpreting, vocabulary, all there in reading. Even the other, even when you look at the specific syllabus, it will show you there. Then you have the 20 remaining to make it 100 for the details of internal assessment of 20 marks. Please refer to the circular number ACAD 11. Now, what is ACAD 11? 20 marks. So what is ACAD 11? ACAD 11 is this. Circular ACAD 11. This is the one. What does it say? It says this for internal assessment. This was the second page of that circular. You can see it here. Everybody is so quiet. Am I coming through? Is everybody getting what I'm saying? Am I going too fast? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, cool. All right. So this is what it says that earlier, this is what it used to be, notebook and all that. Now this is what it is. So let us look at what it is. Okay. Same thing, pen, paper. So now it is not two, three, et cetera. Those marks are not there. Because now it's like one full thing. It's not divided into two terms or whatever. Periodic assessment, meaning what? You have the pen and paper test of five marks. You have multiple assessment, five marks, portfolio, five marks, subject enrichment, five marks. Okay, now for multiple assessment, look at this. Very clear. Quizzes, oral tests, concept map, exit cards, visual expressions, everything is given. If you are keen, we will do a separate session on multiple assessments also. You know, where we can identify, oh, from where, what can we do? Okay, we need to do six in the year, which one should they be? You, you, we could talk about all those things. Portfolio, we've already done. Look, isn't this what we talked about? Peer assessment, self-assessment. Subject, reflections, narrations, journals, etc. Today, I think most of you who've attended portfolio will get your certificate and the support material. Then you have subject enrichment. I'm not going to say much about the subject enrichment because we have a session uh, that is going to come up pretty soon. Subject enrichment session is on 1st of May, I think. We are yes, doing it in shots. Yes, uh, some of you have already registered. The others can register. Uh, it's open. 
uh, right now. So we'll be doing exclusive session on subject enrichment. It requires a bit of understanding and I'll explain why. Look at this now. Then we move to guidelines of assessment of listening and speaking skills. Now subject enrichment, look at the first component. ALS is a component of the subject enrichment activity. I'm not saying it here, it is. But then the project also is a component of subject enrichment activity. And I have tried very hard over the past two years to explain this to a lot many academics. Please do not mix up things. ALS is also subject enrichment. Project is also subject enrichment. The art integrated project, that's also subject enrichment. So it's a marriage between the two. Okay. During assessment, emphasis will be given to speaking and listening since reading and writing are already being assessed in the written exam. For those of you who are already teaching class 11 and 12, you have a rough idea of what happens when you mix a project with listening and speaking. The only difference here is that we, we call it an art integrated project and we have to also include ALN. A L in it, oh, sorry, L N S in it. Okay, listening and speaking in it. I'm not saying it, it's here in the annex chair, please. All right, yes. No, what does it mean, internal assessment? I've already told you, this is all from your syllabus, all from your syllabus. I am not faffing. Okay, listening and speaking competencies, 30 periods, you already know five marks because subject enrichment is five marks. It is recommended that listening and speaking skills should be regularly practiced. 30 periods, regularly practiced, which is why I suggested please integrate with your chapters. Art integrated project based on activities, etc., etc., must be used. Please refer to circular ACAD 33, the very popular ACAD 33, sister states, everything remains the same. It's the same, but it is a part of listening and speaking. This and listening speaking is a part of subject enrichment. I'll give you the details when we meet on 1st of May for, for the session. Yeah, okay. This is what the session is all about. We have it on subject enrichment and it very clearly says ALS and the project, okay? So if somebody is keen on registering, please do so. All right, now let's get down to business. So footprints without feet, is it footprints without feet? I think it should be, what, what is it? First flight, it should be first flight, right? Yes. yes the book is first flight. Let me, I think it's, it doesn't behoove that we, oh, I've interchanged the books. Oh, there we go. See, first flight over here, cut and paste it here. That's the advantage of doing sessions with people you already know. Great. All right. So, yeah, so what do we see? We see, let me just get the slideshow going. Yeah, here we go. Letter to God, Nelson Mandela, two stories about flying from the diary of Anne Frank, glimpses of India, Midgebill. I'm so glad they got Midgebill back. Animals, Madam Rides the Bus, Sermon at Benares, and the one and only play, The Proposal. What have they canceled out? The hundred dresses, one and two. They've canceled that out. In poetry, in yes, in poetry, and you have. So they've canceled out this whole unit. You know, it's called units where you have chapters and a poem. Yes. So you have the hundred dresses with animals that has been canceled out. Everything else is all there. The trees are there. Fog is there this time. And Gregory is there this time. Okay, so you have all, everything. Okay, 
you decide what you want for your half yearlies. I would be putting up some half yearly question papers as well. Uh, I think towards the end of uh, August, I think. When are you required to submit your half yearly papers? When are you required to submit? I think we have the entire September. End of August. August, September. End yeah, of August. August. Hmm. So I think Independence Day, perhaps I'll put up some materials. If you need some help or assistance, you can take materials from there. It'll save you some time. I mean, okay. So yeah, so this is what it is. Then you look at the supplementary book. Okay. This has been canceled. Everything else is there. This has been canceled. Deleted, not canceled, deleted. Okay. And then they recommend that for words and expressions, if you want the child to practice or make the child practice, this is not this is not actively done in the classroom. This is a practice book. It's a workbook. Even there, they have recommended the units one to four and seven to 11. I'm guessing that whatever has been put in the syllabus in the beginning. Remember I said, even if it is not going to be assessed in the exam where they've put in some language items, I think most of them would be covered here. Yeah, so it's a good idea to get them to do that. This is not for the teacher. This is for the students to practice in. Yeah, okay. Let's begin with the question paper now. What does the question paper say? The question paper says, it is divided in different sections. Section A will have questions one and two. Reading comprehension through unseen passage, 20 marks. We know the marks, 20 marks. So the type of questions would be multiple choice and objective type questions. Okay, what kind of objective types you will get to know eventually. We'll attempt to showcase some just so you understand the variety there is. Even then, you never know what the paper is going to include, yeah? Discursive passage, 400 to 450 words, 10 questions, 10 marks, one mark each question. Okay, so there is no choice, all right? Then you have case-based passage, visual input, statistical data, chart, etc. okay? And then 200 to 250 words, this remains the same, 10 minutes. No choice, no choice. So if they get it right, they get it right. If they get it wrong, it's wrong. So out of 20, if a child gets 15, that's five marks knocked off. So unless until we are inculcating those skills, and we are giving them enough practice, even if you are doing, you know, uh, uh, there were a lot of people who, who engaged with the case-based and the uh, discursive passage uh, that we put up on the website for uh, the fun we had and uh, the fun they had and uh, what was it? The Lencho, the letter to God. And if you notice that your sheet, the facilitator sheet has some highlighted portions and there are some footnotes given that this is the reason why this is the answer. So when you are explaining it to the child, the child's worksheet doesn't have all of that. That just has questions. But for the teacher, after every paragraph, those questions have been given that, okay, this is from this paragraph. This is the reason why this is the question. You know, at least that area is highlighted. So when you do it with your children, you will make them do it accordingly. Where did you get this answer from? What is this MCQ? You've pick, picked this. Where is the answer coming from? What is it that you saw? Okay, so those, those, that's the way. When you do it uh, week after week after month after month, then they'll be equipped. Otherwise, what? Otherwise, we haven't taught them anything. They are doing it on their own. No matter how many papers you make them solve, it's going to be a different passage only, no? So it is the skill that is going to make the child do it right, isn't it? Yeah. Then total length, 600 to 700. 
okay what will be assessed it's clearly written inference analysis interpretation evaluation vocabulary do you at any point see recall or wrote or knowledge no so all the what what questions what where when or who all those questions are gone they don't exist look at it it's given here it's given in the it's given in the syllabus okay next we have grammar okay that's your question number 3 grammar okay now the section has also changed so grammar this is what is going to be tested in grammar very clearly all right this is something you know like the back of your hand how will they be tested in which format they have also said this is the format okay yes and they have said that it's going to be 10 out of 12 questions to be attempted have they specified that this is going to be mcq no it doesn't say so anywhere can it be mcq yes can it be without mcq yes because it's not been specified so you know that the child should be prepared to do exercises like these based on these and the child has to attempt 10 out of 12 questions 10 out of 12 so which is why this is 10 marks so section b is a total of 20 marks so if grammar is 10 marks then of course writing is also 10 marks because section b is grammar and writing so for writing you have the formal letter 100 to 120 words on a given situation we'll just talk about this one out of the two given questions to be answered that is why there is no choice in reading because there is choice everywhere else one out of two one out of two one out of two one out of two as a paper as a person who's creating the question paper you have your work cut out for you okay and it's five marks all right so on a given situation so what would be the situation what what are the things that constitute a situation any complaint very good a complaint any inquiry inquiry, inquiry placing order see an application right. for leave will also be a situation this is this has happened and i need that application for leave would be a situation editor this is an issue that is bothering me so i want to talk about it complaint yes inquiry yes request yes anything else that's a situation placing order is that a situation i'm just wondering would that be a situation placing an order yes under some situation only we require certain things to be purchased well then go for it so it's more or less the same yes it's more or less the same they have just not mentioned you know the specific letters but it's more or less the same right so formal letter hmm? and then the next one is analytical paragraph writing 100 to 120 words on a given map chart graph cues now the map could be a concept map a site map a layout map anything a mind map okay charts any kind of graph etc is called a chart perhaps they mean the pie charts here because they've mentioned graphs separately and then you have the cues the verbal cues okay so you have these one out of two again 
so they will have to attempt the analytical paragraph writing there is no question of skipping it now there is no choice between a letter and an analytical paragraph writing both things have to be done okay and it's five marks and you know how detailed the marking scheme is right okay any questions on this anyone oh. okay yeah let's proceed ma'am may i ask one please yes yes please so yes ma'am yeah, analytical paragraph the chart yes. that we are talking about it could be a tabular data also right chart yeah yeah yeah, yeah. any data. stats yes yes life any process, stats even the, the table manufacturing process life process manufacturing processes um, they come under th that's a schematic diagram that's a cycle they have not it's mentioned pictorial it data time. pictorial yeah. data okay. so that they've not mentioned that here okay. there are no diagrams anything mentioned here because when you say queues queue is also it's a very big umbrella right it could yes. be a pictorial data it could be a verbal yes queue. yes so i'm so glad you brought that up because they don't specifically mention verbal cues they have just said cues. cues so it could be diagrams figures etc also okay right um in some of the sheets that we are going to be putting up soon uh there is going to be a complete coder format of approaching each type of analytical uh, paragraph writing so you can take your children through the steps also you will see it soon not no worries okay so analytical paragraph writing now we come to literature how many marks literature 40 marks mm. okay so there is going to be a variety of assessment items you will have these okay and what competencies would be addressed you would have comprehension very simple analysis interpretation vocabulary extrapolation across and beyond the text okay so nothing in isolation here everything's connected okay then let's go to the number 5 which is reference what what was number 4 question number 4 analytical paragraph right right so uh, sorry the writing section okay then you have reference to context 10 marks 10 okay which means the first one which is an extract based will be drama and prose drama and prose which means what both the texts are in play here yes both the texts are in play first flight and footprints it's from either excluding the poems yes one extract out of two so there's no poetry here so one extract out of two the child has to attempt and there are five questions that are going to be given and they they can be mcq or they can be objective type um, i mean there'll be a mix or exclusive it could be all mcqs it could be a mix i doubt if it's going to be all objective type okay so you have this the choice within the questions is not there but the choice between the two items are definitely there two extracts then the second one you have is on poetry only on poetry so two extracts from any of the two poems in the syllabus and the same thing one out of two and five marks that's your 10 marks okay then multiple choice questions objective type questions and what are they assessing inference analysis interpretation evaluation and vocabulary there is no comprehension the lowest level is interpretation so there are no direct picks 
So the moment you teach in class saying that only this is what it is, gone. Okay. Then you have the short and the very long answer type questions. Very long. Okay, so 40 minus 10, 30. 10 marks MCQ, uh, extract base. Now we are left with 30. So now from first flight, you have prose and poetry and you have 12 marks. So your short questions, total of four questions out of five. Short questions, 40 to 50 words, three marks. Not two marks, three marks. Inferential responses through critical thinking. Inferential. What are the things that Walli saw? That's not going to be a question. Okay, then you have another short question set. Footprints without feet, six marks. So you have total of two of three, 40 to 50 words, three marks each. Inferential responses. Okay, yeah. Any questions here? Good. Now let's go to the last part, which is the long questions. First flight, prose and poetry. Any one of two. 100 to 120 words only, but six marks. Therefore, these 100 and 120 words have to make an impact. And the question is going to be something that is going to be worth six marks. Six marks. Eventually, it's going to rise up to eight or 10 marks, can be a passage-based question taken from a situation or plot from the texts as written there. Okay. Creativity, imagination, extrapolation beyond the text and across the texts. But it says first flight. So therefore, across the text over here means across the text in first flight. They've exclusively mentioned first flight by name. You noticing that? So it, it cannot span the two books. Right. Because they have clearly said first flight. Getting it? Yes? Now. Footprints without feet, prose, any one of two, 100, 120 words, six marks. So it's going to be, you know, these questions are going to be very pointed, specific questions because you just have 100 words to answer. So if, if the child doesn't understand what is being asked, the child is going to digress and that is not going to meet the brief. Okay, so what are the questions based on character, theme, plot, extrapolation beyond the text, and we are looking for interpretation, which is your understanding and inference, because the character did X, Y, Z, what do you infer by this action? This is this particular theme that has come through. How can you say so? How will you interpret the evidence given in the text? This is the plot and so on. See, it specifies that footprints without feet is going to have these questions. Based on this, double check your syllabus if you don't believe me. So now, if that means there won't be character sketches from first flight. It does not say that they can't be. Because you know, it your reader, your reader, my dear, can 
can be used to question or create any question because it okay. says creativity, imagination, yes. extrapolation. So when it says creativity and imagination, you can imagine the type of question. See, questions, situation or a plot, which is extrapolated and you would get something like this. That has what been ancient. So it says can be, it does not say will be. Yes. yes. But Thank over you. here they have said it would be based on, based on. Okay. A theme of a chapter, the plot of a chapter. Plot means what? All the incidents that have happened. That's what the plot is. All the incidents that have happened. What is the problem? What is the conflict? What if this had changed? All those questions are plot based. Theme is your message, your gist, your global comprehension and character sketch. It in ultimately comes down to evaluation. Your, your, your personal point of view about the character or a particular incident that you quote and say, what do you think are the qualities of this character? If this had not been done, then what would it? There's so many questions that can be made. I'll expose you to all of that by and by. Okay. So that is what it is, I guess. Any questions? Ma'am, could you please show the last slide again? The yeah. same one you're sure. showing. Sure. Ma'am, sure. what is the difference in um, having across the text on the top and not having it here? Here it's only saying beyond the text. Yes, because this, I'll tell you, because this is your reader. Reader is your main book. Reader is a book through which you do your skills. LSRW which is why it is important to correlate across the text. This is just your extensive reading in the sense, these are just literary pieces. Just literary pieces. It's, they are stories. But you cannot say that you have all stories in first flight, can you? Do you have all stories? No, no. The, no, no. So then you have non-fiction, you have yes. so many other also genres as well. Piece. Yes, yes. So therefore... This is, you have plays, you have poetry, so many things. See, it's prose and poetry. It's quite yes. possible that there would be a, a, a relationship that is drawn between a poem and a, and, a, and, a, and a chapter or a couple of chapters. We've done a lot of that. I think so many yes. of you have taken our question papers and sheets. You've seen so many questions like that. There are so many others that will come up, I'm sure. So yeah. it be if a student would like to compare and contrast between the two textbooks, would no. it be incorrect? No, be why, okay? why, why, why would it be incorrect? It depends on the question. I doubt you the child would be given uh, such a question. Ma'am, there was a question. Uh, can you think of any other character that reminds you of Custard? So some uh, wanted to compare uh, Bholi's courage. Yeah, the yeah, of end. course, of course. Yeah, so, but, but Bholi, my dear, yeah, let me just tell you, Bholi and Custard are very different. Custard no, chose no to go custody. back to complacency, but Bholi didn't. Bholi broke the shackles and then emerged on her own and refused to go back to who she used to be. So that yes, comparison that wouldn't work. That, uh, that is the contrast they created. Contrast, I also came yes. across one question of compare and contrast, which included the comparison of, uh, you know, Nelson Mandela, I mean, his childhood and some other character from the other uh, lesson. So, See, uh, scientist lesson. You can do anything. Like you can do anything for discussion, for multiple assessments, for critical thinking, for analysis, for allowing them opportunities to express their point of view. However, what I just showcased to you is your exam menu. While teaching, you can go any which way you want. You can even ask them to compare things with their previous class. Nobody is saying don't do that. Do it. Is it going to be there in the examination? No. I, I'm assuming that is what you're wanting to ask, right? So there is no question of correct or incorrect at all. Please feel free. Allow them to explore. One of the 
one of the major LOs of reading is being able to connect with a prior experience. So if they've read something similar earlier, it's really good if you allow them to do that or you know so on. For the exam paper in 2022, the papers that are supposed to happen right now, currently, yes, all that is valid because then there are questions across the two books also. But over here, it doesn't suggest that. Okay, yes. Any other questions? No, ma'am, uh, this yes. first slide, it says prose and poetry. Yes. So uh, a question from drama would not be included in this? Prose is a prose fiction and prose drama. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. yeah, yes. I love it. I love it when I get such questions. How sweet are these questions? And I'm so glad that you feel comfortable asking these questions. I used to be very conscious. What if I'm considered a fool or something? I, you know, <laughs> when I was a young teacher, you know. Any any other questions? Can I can I bring down the PPT, please? Are we done with the PPT? Yes, 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 yes. ma'am. Okay, good. Any Anything else that you'd like to uh, uh, seek some clarity on or is this okay? Please don't worry about uh, subject enrichment. We will do all of that in detail in another session. Uh, listening, speaking, whatever support you need, you will find at the website. I will ensure that you get it. And please remember, if I put up something on the website, it will be based on all these things that I've showed you, nothing is going to be out of context. It's going to have a root in whatever the objectives or the LOs are, right? The rest, yeah. of course, you're amazing at creating things. You can do that, definitely. Ma'am, <clears throat> one more thing, the uh, descriptive uh, paragraph writing for class nine. Mm -hmm. That also says situations, uh, the person and events and situations. So events, persons is okay, but what would be the situation? Basically? A trip, an event, uh, something, the pers a personal narrative, anecdote, some, some problem that they experienced, a quarrel with a friend, or, you know, your computer crashed and you had to submit something. It's a situation, no? Yes, yes. Any situation. Because Essentially, they are events, basically. Uh, yeah, because events and situations both are mentioned. Yeah, yeah. So then situations are basically, situations basically sort of tend to move towards something that says, okay, perhaps you'll be in a bit of a pickle. You know, so, so because remember, one of the things written there is problem solving, analysis, yeah. you know. So something that allows the child to express that in their writing. Okay, thank you. Logic, basically. Yes, yes. I see somebody's hand raised. Is that from before or are we? Sorry, ma'am, it's before. Yeah. Okay. So are we done? Ruchi, yes, ma'am, I have a question. Yes. Uh, ma'am, when we talk of analysis, we talk of right. extrapolation, we talk of interpretation. Yes. Uh, then the marking also becomes that much more diverse. Yeah? Yes. So we can have some uh, session on what is to be marked as correct and what is to be marked as incorrect because what is logical according to me might not be logical according to someone else. Yeah. So, uh, Gurbansh, if you look at the marking scheme for the sample paper for this current session, uh, not the current session, I should be saying the previous session, the previous session, right? You would see that there are, there are a lot of details that have been given to allow that kind of freedom for interpretation in a child. I think when we were doing it for class 12, somebody asked this very same question. And I did say that the marking scheme is going to cater to both sides of the coin right. in an answer. So, so as to allow the child to explore a particular uh, line of thinking that the child wants, provided it is logically justified, oblique substantiated from the text. Right. 
right? right. Yes. Thank and you. yes, we can have a session. That's a great idea. If you could drop me a line sometime and remind me uh, towards July end or something, we can have one which talks about assessment in which probably we'll have some demo pieces and everybody collaboratively in breakout rooms can uh, do some assessment work and then we'll discuss why team A gave this much and team B gave this much. That's going to really help you sort of, you know, um, ensure that your children's queries are justified when you're giving them marks as well. Absolutely. Right. Uh, but right. added to that, added to that, a, a point to that is how to fit all of this into maybe we, we have the limit as 100 to 120. Uh, so even if we allow the child to go till 150, how to fit all what is required for an answer within that word limit? So if yeah, that that <laughs> that is what we call writing skills. skills. Yes. So if we if we could have some you know a few examples of how it happens, we know what the marking scheme looks like. They are all in, it's all in points. These are so yeah. once it's incorporated by the student required number into an answer, how does it look? What can we I'll take back you. to class as an example? I'll, I'll tell you how we'll do we'll do a session on this also. Writing skills, you're amazing. Okay, you all do it very well. You all know how to go about it. You know how to teach your kids how to do a, a letter on an analytical paragraph. The point is in a six marker in literature, when they are supposed to write 100, 120 words, which is what I perhaps you're talking about, Winnie, is so, yes. so, you know, then there has to be, you have to sort of first get them to do their ideas and then you have to start scaffolding with templates hmm. if you have to write a character square sketch or a critical appreciation of a poem or etc etc i don't know how many of you attended teaching of poetry but we did showcase some templates for writing a critical appreciation does someone remember that so they they are called templates yes, you need to showcase the templates with your children so we could um, put up some of those on the website or we could have a session on that as well. That's a beautiful, you know, we could have a session on everything. I just hope somebody is noting <laughs> and that you can remind me and then yeah. we would definitely do it for sure. For sure. Don't worry about that. Mama, yeah. I think in one of the discussions we had uh, that you would give us a lesson plan template, a rough one. I think it was part of, so to you cater know, to the skills kind of thing, what yeah. we are now expected yeah the main reason why i'm not getting into that domain I, I could do that easily the main reason because every school has a different mm. way of writing a lesson plan Correct. some people do it on a weekly basis some people mm. are told to do it fortnightly some do it monthly some blessed souls are asked to do it on a daily basis so okay. you know so, it becomes difficult to sort of we you know do the annual one but uh but ma'am, uh, one request is that you just, you you may give a format and you just, you know, kind of scaffold us that for a fortnight, if you are want to write a, write for fortnight, you can do it like this. And if you are want to write it weekly, then you can do it such or ten, whatever mother. You can at least give it, give the format and scaffold us accordingly. How but many we, stages are there in planning a lesson? How many stages are there in planning a lesson? What I what is it called? Does anybody know what is it called? The stages of uh, doing something. I'm talking for a skills, like so you all mentioned, for a skill-based lesson. What are the stages? What are those stages called? So what, that is what I'm saying. So if I put it down also, I need to ensure that you are on the same page as I am to be able to understand the the I, I don't the efficacy of such a lesson plan and if you really want a quick referral you know there was this uh, art book that has uh, been published by the cbsc art integration right so if you look at the lesson plan in that that's pretty much uh it's it's you know like a unit is done in four like for example if you have letter to god it's been done in four lessons Okay, so you would see that kind of a plan. You would get an idea. So what did I just tell you? Art integration manual, and uh, you would get to see the lesson plan there. You would get to see it. So don't Thank worry. You. Do you want me to 
show you right now? Should we try? Do you want to have a look? I, you can course. you can figure it out. They you can always given. connect with me later. No worries. Okay. Yes. Yeah. They are given for all the classes there. Sorry. Yes. Very good, darling. Very good. Yes, they have. They've given for all classes, all subjects, actually. Yes. yes. And it's pretty detailed. Pretty yes. detailed. Yeah. And uh, besides that, ma'am, that um, then they have published one document of alternative calendar. In that also, they have given a lot of ideas how you can yes. go about the lessons yes. and uh, lesson yes. plans. Yes. And uh, even if you look at the curriculum document or... Uh, you know, that was for 21-22, the curriculum document for 21-22. Let me just share my screen and uh, show you. Excuse me, ma'am. See the curriculum document. Uh, can you see this? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Huh? Just give me a second. Yeah. So the curriculum uh, document. Given, also... Yes, ma'am. They had yes. given the lesson plan stages. Yes, there, there is something called lesson plans. This so it's all right there. Yes, Let me just take you to the index somewhere. You would see it. This yes, is the curriculum is document. No? Uh, so you'd see it somewhere. Page, yeah, it's there. It's there. It, they, they will not sort of uh, leave you in the lurch. So This year's booklet yeah, also here has it is. this. See. So your basic lesson plan. The best thing is that you can easily say based on what is given in the curriculum document, but then look at it, pedagogical strategies, group activities, experiments, hands-on learning, interdisciplinary linkages, infusion of life skills. You can choose which one you want to take resources, assessment items for measuring the attainment of the learning, what are you using, remedial teaching plan if required, how are you giving the feedback, what are your inclusive practices, so which means you better be knowing what each one means. Right? So that is just about it, I guess. So yes, there is a lot yeah. we can do. There's a lot we can do. I uh, uh, I think, uh, Joselyn, were you, did you have your uh, hand raised? Yes, Asha, yes, 100%. Engage. That's, a, that's, that's the thing that we need to do. Yes, the engage lesson plans. I guess we can call it a day if there are no more questions.